Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack, back again to bring you all the news about the Holy Priest rework. Thank you so much for being patient. I didn't want to cover it right away because I had no time to play it for myself. So we've had some time to play it, go through Mythic Raids, go through High Keys with it, and let's dive in. If you guys missed it, Leap of Faith no longer interrupts spell casts from allies, so unfortunately you can no longer troll your friends by life gripping their hearthstones or tranks or other great abilities. In other news, Imperial Blaze has been redesigned in a great way, where it is a passive instead of an active ability, where Chastise causes your next two casts of Holy Fire to be instant, cost no mana, incur no cooldown. It also continues to extend the duration of the Holy Fire dot on the target as well. This means that what you want to do is you want to Holy Fire, then Chastise, then Holy Fire twice. And since it has no internal cooldown, every single time that you Chastise, you are getting those two free Holy Fires. And if you're running one of the new talents, we'll go into in a second, Voice of Harmony, I think is what it's called, it's also going to mean that you are having your Holy Fires reducing the cooldown of Chastise. So you have a good feedback loop that your Holy Fires are giving you more Chastise, your Chastise giving you more Holy Fires. It's sick. Pond Effects has gotten a nice facelift. Flash Heal, Heal, Prayer of Healing, and Circle of Healing increase the healing done by your next Holy Word spell by 6%, stacking up to 5 times. This is a really nice facelift. Instead of having, I think it was like the crits from Flash and Heal, it's now all of these abilities. Uh, adding a lot of power to your next Holy Word spell, which is really good for raids and really good for M+. In the Mythic Farak uh, kill I had last night, I had like 120 stacks worth of bonus uh, Holy Word power, and it stacks up to a lot of extra healing for your Holy Words in total by taking this one point talent, which is being led, or you're getting to that point, and we'll show you in the talents in a second, by other really good talents, so it's a really easy pick. Lightwell has been redesigned! Uh, every second, the Lightwell attempts to heal a party raid member within 40 yards instead of the 20 yards it was previously. It is lower than 50% health and applies 6 seconds of Renew. Keep in mind, Renew ticks every 2.5 seconds or something. It's based on haste. And that means it's about 2 or 3 ticks of Renew at best. Lightwell lasts for 2 minutes until it, or until it heals 15 times. And the cooldown is now reduced by 3 seconds when you cast a Holy Word. We did some testing on this last night as well. It's very consistent, like 3-ish percent of your overall healing, and that not including those couple extra ticks of Renew that you're going to end up getting, but those are very small, and those extra Renews don't really have a significant impact on the extra Holy Words you're getting as a result of your tier set. So I think the only way Lightwell would be really good at the moment is if you're in like an incredibly spread fight where you can't take advantage of Divine Word. More on Divine Word a little bit later. All healing has been reduced by 7%. I didn't really notice this in dungeons. In fact, I'll show some footage here in this video of healing the Blight of Galakron trash on Fortified on like a 28 or 29 or something. And we were cranking like three, 400k healing. And I think I maintained like 300k healing over like two minutes or something like that. Uh, healing in dungeons feels fine. In raids, I didn't think I really noticed it too heavily. And I think I felt like Divine Word made up for it. And again, we'll talk about that when we get there. But it is kind of weird having that nerf coming in the same patch that Miss Sweeper gets buffed. I know. I will say, I didn't feel like it was the end of the world as I was raiding last night. Holy Fire and Chastise mana cost is reduced. They're nearly free. Resonant Words now has that AoE synergy where it's causing your Holy Words to increase the healing done of your next Flash, Heal, Prayer of Healing, or Circle of Healing. Again, it's not having any sort of stacks to it. It's just that next cast gets buffed. Divine Word, now increase the effectiveness of your next Holy Word spell by 30% instead of the 50% that it was, but they also moved it around, so this is very important. They also changed around some of the interactions, where casting Chastise with Divine Word increased your damage dealt by 20%, it was 30% before, maybe it was 50% before, also refunds 15 seconds from the cooldown of Holy Word Chastise instead of its previous effect. Casting Sanctify with Divine Word plus the target area and heals five targets instead of the six, which is great because that's how Sanctify's healing right now. So the healing done been increased by 25%. Casting Holy Word Serenity with Divine Word active no longer increases the crit strike chance of Flash Heal, Heal, and Renew. This is not that big of a deal because in dungeons in particular where you would use Divine Word, you're also taking a talent called Crisis Management which increases the amount of crit strike your casts are getting, so you're not really missing this too much. The other big thing 
and I, spoiler alert, final three rows of the tree have been organized. We're going to skip ahead a little bit because to give context for why all these divine word nerfs are happening, you can take divine word and divine image at the same time. They're no longer competing as talents. And I'll show you in just a moment as to what everything is competing with, but it's well worth them nerfing those abilities to have access to this ability. Healing Chorus increased the healing of Circle of Healing by 5%, stacking 20 times, was 2% stacking 50 times. This is actually a buff, and you would only really hit this max stacks if you're in like Salvation, or you're just casting like crazy amounts of Sanctify from your tier set procs or whatever. Uh, most of the time, Healing Chorus was not reaching max stacks on a regular basis in its old form. In its new form, you could pretty regularly hit max stacks, pressing the ability nearly on cooldown. This adds a lot of extra power to Circle of Healing, and it will replace Prayer Circle. Prayerful Litany now heals for 100% more than the most injured ally it affects. This ability still feels pretty garbage, particularly when you're also going to be taking Healing Chorus. And there's more talent points that you can shift around. Namely, something like Gales of Song now being a one-pointer is really, really big value compared to its previous two-point version. Uh, this is incredibly big value. Voice of Harmony is the new uh, talent name for Harmonious Apparatus. And basically, Harmonious Apparatus is the same. It just means that Holy Nova also reduces the cooldown of Chastise. So, if you add Apotheosis up, your Holy Fires and your Holy Novas are also reducing your Chastises, and you have an insane feedback loop of Chastise, Holy Fire, Holy Fire, Holy Nova, maybe another Holy Fire, and then Chastise again, and you just do insane damage. It's crazy. Some connections between different talents, between Divine Service, Say Your Prayers, great. The Renew talents and Empower Renew and Rapid Recovery have also been removed. So let's actually get into what this all means, okay? It's all on the right side. There's no changes to the class tree whatsoever. This is my proposed raid talent setup. Uh, this is what I was using last night for Mythic Farak, and from talking to some other Holy Priest players, this seems to be about the build that I would recommend everybody goes with. And notably, you're not taking certain talents like Revitalizing Prayers, where you're having the extra renew application. I think if you are in a situation where you were taking Prayer Circle still, it might have some more value, but there's some really big buffs to some other talents. Namely, Healing Chorus getting better, like we had just talked about, making it so you can reach max stacks and get full healing. I think I did the exact same amount of Circle of Healing casts as our other Holy Priest, and I did like 6 mil more Circle of Healing output on its own, not including the Mastery and all the other add-ons, just by taking this ability. Gales of Song is incredibly good value. It's not only increasing your Divine Hymns healing, but it's also increasing your entire raids healing received, which is really, really good raid utility. Instead of having the 20% additional healing, you're getting 30% additional healing onto your entire raid. So it's a 10% increase by specking into Gales of Song. That's great in a progression raiding environment, and it's just overall good utility to be able to bring to your team. You can choose to drop Enlightenment if you wanted to go into Chastise for some more Epiphany resets. Miracle Worker got moved up, which is a fantastic thing, since you're basically always taking it anyway. It's in the place of those Renew Talents. Like I mentioned a little bit earlier, Divine Word is no longer competing with Divine Image, and Divine Image, of course, being a hard lock talent, especially with our tier set as it exists right now. So Divine Word is now competing with Restitution, which is the Spirit of Redemption res. Divine Word putting out some great output in raids. I noticed, like I mentioned previously, that it's a bit more healing than you're getting at a light well by using the Divine Word Sanctuary, the nice healing field. And it's kind of a pain to spec into like Light of the Naru and dropping Answered Prayers or dropping Epiphany, since those are both really strong talents in raid right now. So it kind of makes it a bit of a non-starter to actually go down to route to Lightwell to begin with, and I still don't think it's better than Divine Word being used decently properly because it's amping up your next Holy Word, and it's also giving that additional healing effect. So maximizing that Sanctify field is going to be very, very important in a raid environment. I also think you can take Restitution if you're progging right now and want to just live. I don't think Divine Word is so much output that it feels like it's going to be the end of the world if you don't take it. If you're dying in phase one or something like that, at a tendril, it's a lot better for your guild's prog to not use that battle res and make sure they have it later on for somebody else. 
food for thought. For a Mythic Plus environment, not too many changes that you'll see here for the talent tree. Once again, Imperial Blaze is a passive now, which is fantastic. And Burning Behemoths still does crazy, amazing damage. And you can still expect that to happen in this patch. Uh, the talent tree felt a little bit more awkward to set up. I bounced between having the point in Say Your Prayers or putting the point into Resonant Words, as I think both of those are pretty good talents to have on hand. You really notice how much Prayer of Mending Healing you get in a bursting week as well, since the, the efficiency of the ability is still really high. So maybe you'll be able to bounce between those. But Pond Effect still feels really good. I do think, especially when you're playing with Resonant Words in mind, to hit a Serenity, then a Flash, hit a Serenity, then a Flash, uh, that it actually feels very good to play. Especially when you have things like Desperate Times, Whenever somebody does drop low, you're cranking huge healing into them with flash heals that are critting, healing more when they're low health or a serenity if they're low health. You're also having an incredible feedback loop of having your chastise, holy fire cast that are feeding you more chastise, big damage all the way through. So how do things actually really feel when you're going into a raiding environment? Well, one of the biggest things that I noticed is just how insanely bad it feels to be casting Prayer of Healing when you don't have Prayer Circle. Prayer of Healing already doesn't do that much healing, and losing Prayer Circle's mana efficiency means that the casts are slow, don't hit very hard, and it feels like you're casting way less of them because, well, you are, and you're getting way less Sanctifies, or at least some less Sanctifies as a result. What this really means is that tracking your answered prayers uh, is incredibly important and making sure that you are ready to be casting those prayer of healings as answered prayers procs the apotheosis so that you can churn out more sanctifies and get the most out of that window it also does feel like my mana is really good and so maybe there's just those moments i have to get used to casting the same amount of prayer of healings but just casting them slower and keeping in mind when I'm timing my like sanctifies or serenities to help bounce people back from the insanely, insanely bursty damage that this raid does end up throwing out at us. I will say uh, Divine Hymn felt really strong and felt really good, uh, but of course, Gales of Song has been a favorite talent of mine for a pretty long time. I've noticed how quickly that Healing Chorus stacks up. Uh, you don't need to track the stacks out of Healing Chorus. I just had it baked into my UI from Luxos's add-ons, and it was really helpful to get that additional clarity as to how fast it stacks, but for your use, you don't need to worry about that whatsoever. Uh, I did notice, and I mentioned it at the beginning, that Pond Effects feels very strong, and I was getting a really large amount of stacks just from regularly using Circle of Healing, Prayer of Healing, Flash Heal procs, whatever it was, to amp up my next Holy Words. I wasn't really waiting and stacking them for a specific decision. I wasn't like, build up to five stacks and then hit my Sanctify. Wasn't worrying about that at all, letting it naturally happen. Uh, I did actually end up capping out Pond Effect stacks a couple times, but it was also for Rack, and so there's a number of times where there's not really much going on, and so I wouldn't be surprised if that was more the reason for why I was over stacking on Pond Effects here or there, but I'll probably get better at it as I get some more practice. I did notice Divine Word Sanctify is a pain to be able to place properly on some fights and finding areas where you're going to be able to maximize its positioning, maximize its value is going to be really important. I noticed when I was on Tendril that there were moments where I wasn't placing it as well or was kind of holding on to it a little bit too long. It got a bit easier on Farak since there's big bursty moments of damage and the raid kind of plants in place for a good 20-30 seconds before the next round of like blaze lines come out or the next boss movement comes out. And so that made it easier to be able to play around. But it's certainly one of those things that after taking, you know, all of Avarice and not playing with it, it's something to think about again, be mindful of again, as we're uh, getting used to utilizing that ability. I know some people have been messing around with using it with the Smoldering Seedling. I don't have a Seedling yet to be able to properly mess around with it. But I think it'd be kind of weird to like Divine Word, or just be like Guardian Spirit the Seedling, Divine Word, Serenity it, and then I guess just follow up with some Flash Shields on top. Maybe I'd be interested in seeing some logs to see how it goes, but I didn't feel like not having Seedling was really negatively impacting my output or anything. Still think the ability is going to be good. Uh, it does really commit your Guardian Spirit to it, though. I didn't feel that Holy Priest was in such dire straits after that 7% nerf, but I am a little bit surprised that they did it to begin with. In a dungeon environment, I really love the changes that they've made for 1026. The spec feels a lot smoother in how it delivers damage. You still do have a setup where, yeah, you want to holy fire, then chastise, then get your two free holy fires, 
and probably using like your Holy Nova after the fact. You'd prefer to do that when you can. But I found even when I'm in those moments where I have to move a lot and run all over the place, that just having that Chastise to hit on the move and having two free follow-up Holy Fires to hit feels really, really powerful and really noticeable. It also means that using Divine Word and Apotheosis together is a ridiculous, ridiculous damage cooldown. It's just having the insane feedback loop of like Apotheosis, Divine Word, Chastise, Holy Fire, Holy Fire, Holy Nova, Chastise, Holy Fire, Holy Fire, Holy Nova, Chastise, and just this infinite feedback loop where you're getting your damage increased, you're doing crazy cleave damage to everything around you. There were a lot of moments when I was dealing damage that I was not using Shadow of Pain at all. Keep in mind, with the what is it, Voice of Harmony talent, your Holy Nova is also reducing your Chastise's cooldown. And so I found around five targets, I was using Holy Nova, regardless of what was happening with those mobs, because it was also giving me more Chastises back and dealing really good damage. You're also gaining one stack out of Rhapsody every second, and so you're always hitting one stack Rhapsodies at the very least. And so I would say, unless there's like two or three targets or something, that's around the only time I'd really be utilizing my Shadow Word Pain. Otherwise, feel free to be just sending those Holy Fires, Chastises, and Holy Novas uh, into those enemies to do as much damage as you possibly can. It felt really, really strong. There weren't a lot of other like big gameplay changes, and I still think Holy Priest kind of needs something to do some like burst AoE healing, particularly in a dungeon like Everbloom, where it's a big irritant of trying to be able to burst heal everybody in the raid at the same time if everyone's taking the same amount of damage. And I still feel like the spec is more reliant on building themselves up to be super tanky with things like Leaf or Rage Heart, Choker of Shielding, high ridiculous amounts of Verse to make sure that they don't have to spam themselves as much as other people when that even Burst damage is happening all over. But I do think having the additional cooldown of Divine Word feels really, really nice. I was using it on Yalnu in like a 28 or 29 I did the other day. And it did a crazy amount of healing. It was like 5 or 6% of my healing on that boss fight. Because it was just steadily applying even healing to everybody throughout each tick of the ad. And I also felt like I had a lot of mana on hand anyway. And didn't really need to worry about the mana savings out of something like Divine Word. That dungeon, I was also insanely juiced by having an Aug Evoker in the group. And it was Everbloom. And I was doing like 180k overall on some fortified week with lots of AoE, lots of damage increases to my abilities. On the dawn run that we did, I think I was doing like 80 or 90k overall, which still felt pretty good. And I think I could have gotten it a little bit higher, but I think that was the first dungeon I had done over the course of the day. So in all, I think Holy Priest is feeling really smooth in, in dungeons. It's a little awkward in raids getting used to using Divine Word again, especially because you're pushing yourself primarily to use it in Sanctuary. And there's a lot of fights that are just bursts of damage, bursts of damage, and Rot just doesn't really exist. I do think this is a really, really good foundation for the War Within, because, God willing, they're gonna slow down damage so that healing over time effects that are powerful, like, you know, Divine Word Sanctuary, are going to receive a lot of value. And so, Hopefully, this is going to be a fantastic sort of foundation to be able to build upon going into the next expansion. And I really like that the way the talent tree is sort of shaped up is that you have options for like additional complexity in those like answered prayers, which gives you your apotheosis stacks, and in epiphany, which is giving you the extra prayer of mendings when you're playing around them. And you have the option to like take those talents and have the additional difficulty for rating, but also have the additional output as a result. And then you can also just kind of flex without them if somebody was like newer to the spec or wasn't looking for as much complication. The way they've like structured the choices for the spec feels really, really good. Uh, obviously, not having an interrupt is still an issue, not having a bow res. There's still a few problems out there that priest players are experiencing on the daily. But we'll see what the War Within beta is going to have in store for us. Or the hero talents, because at the moment, at the time of this recording, they put Oracle back in the shop, and so we don't exactly know what Oracle is really going to be cooking up in future either. So big thank you to everybody who has subbed and is part of the Patreon, part of the members, Twitch subs, all of that stuff. Thank you for all the support in helping me do what I do. If you'd like to check it out, check it out in the description down below. Let me know what you guys think of the 1026 rework and some of your experiences thus far. And if there's any other changes to either of the talents for Raid or Mythic Plus, you can check them out on my WoW Head Guides 
also linked in the description down below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all next time.